Welcome, Jamie. How are you, how are you doing? It's such a pleasure. I really appreciate you you making the time. Not at all, not at all. And I, I actually used to join the, I used to come to a lot of these startup events, um, startup grind events. And uh, once saw Heidi Rosen uh, when she came to Edinburgh, uh, the American venture capitalist, and found it very, very helpful, helpful actually. And at, at the stage, I was kind of considering whether or not to set up active. Uh, so I came to came to get get three or four, and yeah, found it very helpful. So great to be invited onto you, onto one. Fantastic, thank you, Jamie. Very very kind of you, and of course, lot to dive into. I know we had a brief chat yesterday, and I wish we actually had two three hours uh, in terms of the amount I'd love to to ask you. But I thought we start with okay, Jamie, with an introduction from yourself. I feel you'll say it far better than me, and um, of course, I'm sure people have read the bio as well. But yeah, if for anyone who's maybe not heard of you or is keen to hear more, um, what are you all about? Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, I founded uh, Active Water um, back in 2017. Um, that was when we actually launched Active uh, into the market. Uh, we first launched in Harrods and Whole Foods, Plant Organic, and it took a long time to then grow. Uh, we're now in 8,000 retailers, 15 countries, including USA, and, uh, and the market leader of Alkaline Water in in uk europe and middle east um it's a very fast growing sector but it's uh it was a hard it was a big long journey to get here uh it took just over two years to actually get from concepts to actually get a product out in the market with all sorts of production problems and uh, most i had literally no money uh something back my parents i just uh, finished the salt eye fellowship with one person who's here today lilia he's uh, which is a great experience. Went over to Boston, and um, and it was like a compressed MBA, and uh, for for eight months. And uh, then when I came back, uh, yeah, was at, at home uh, with my parents. A lot of pressure for my parents to to go out and get a job, but I knew there was something in the concept. And this idea all came from a row where we rode from Australia to Africa, and that's very physical. You run two hours on, two hours off, twenty four hours a day. Uh, for two and a half months until you get to the other side. It's 5,000 miles away. Um, and so it's burning 10,000 calories a day. You know, you're, you're, you're drinking nine to 13 liters every day. And you get hit by all, you know, really pretty horrendous storms, one of which, which is hurricane mm -hmm. water. And, yeah, and you're on sports out there. And the problem was when you drink that much water, you start to flush the salt out of your, out of your body. And so mm -hmm. as you very unbalanced, you start to pass out in the oars. You're then beginning to hallucinate. We just constantly hear uh, dogs barking. We constantly hear mobile phones going off. For some reason, it was a mm. mobile phone uh, ringtone that I used to hear. <laughs> the most annoying. Oh, wow. <laughs> in the world. And, and they get so real, your mind thinks they're real. Um, and, and it's at the stage where we had virtually nothing left. And wake you up on a night, mm. that kind of three or four o'clock in the morning where it's cold outside wind tiling and, and you, you just don't have the energy for it and you get out there and and uh it all changed when one person of our crew mixes fresh water with seawater and we always mm. kill you and actually your kidneys can process two percent salt seawater is three and a half percent salt in solution now you dilute it down so it's only one percent it's one of the best sports drinks you ever have and as oh. straight away on that night shift uh, when we took it you felt normally you flagged in the last 40 minutes we had power mm. right the way through in a two-hour session and so it made you know what else is in you know water is this powerful on performance what else can you do with it and every second mm. one quarter sea water uh and the rest was was uh, yeah it was 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 desalinated water and we broke the guinness world records in the indian ocean mm. by two weeks and that's because of what we drank and if you look at the how, how we're doing up to that point, it was much slower mm. than what happened afterwards. And and then so research water all over the world. So I found ionized water in Japan. And they'd approved this by the Ministry of Health in 1965 mm. for people with Crohn's, uh, IBS, advanced reflux, and it acts an anti-inflammatory in the gut. Uh, but there's a lot of benefits mm. to ionized water. It hydrates quicker, it gets into your blood quicker. It gets into your cells quicker, and uh, with the Western diet has become increasingly more acidic over the last, mm. last 30, 50 years. You know, there's a lot of red meat, so your alcohol consumption is very high. There's more sweetness put into food, 
uh, aspartame is the most acidic thing you can actually put in. Uh, mm. All um, carbonated soft drinks are acidic. What's alkaline is is vegetables, and 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 majority of fruits. But it's hard to get that much alkalinity into your body, and that's why when people mm. drink alkaline water, they feel different. So I kind of saw in Japan after I came back, there was a big market in Japan. Uh, that's where it started. Massive market in America, and it's mm. growing at a rate of knots that was just astonishing. I mean, I, I remember right back at the start of meeting a brand who was now the market leader in the states. And they were doing yeah. 22 million in sales in 2015. Last year, they did 360 million. And they're looking to exit wow. one and a half billion. But uh, it's one of the stages now where, where they've almost got too big to exit. Uh, mm. You know, and it's, they've, they've been in there for too long. Um, and so it's, it's, it's quite an interesting thing when, knowing when to sell. And now there yeah. is stage where it, they've had a lot of private equity in. Private equity is not going to, going to land to sell for anything less. But it's too mm. much for brand, so you know, it's too much. It's almost too much for them to buy. So, so that story, and it's been. been <laughs> a it, uh, I'm kind of giving the snapshot, but you know, I wasn't in the industry before. I wasn't mm. in. I didn't know anything about bottled water, and right going back to the start, I had no money. Uh, I didn't know what to call it. I didn't know where mm. to make it. I didn't know how to make it. Um, I didn't have a team. And we're going to the most competitive drinks category in the world. So almost everything was against us. <laughs> but, uh, but the key is just to start. Because once you start, one thing will move into the next. And mm. you'll be surprised where you are. If you look back four weeks, you, you'll realise actually quite a lot's happened. If you look back three, you know, where you were three months ago, you realise you've done a lot in that three months. And as long as you keep moving forward and you've got that positive and optimistic attitude, you know, one thing will lead on. And people will want to help. You know, I'd be involved with something exciting. Um, mm. So that's <laughs> fantastic. What an introduction. It, it's, and this is what we said yesterday. There's so many ways we could take this in terms of the, the, the topics. And I wonder if it's okay to, but I'd love actually to start with your roots. Because what, what I'm hearing, and I guess it's quite a nice analogy, is a startup is an adventure. You know, I can almost see everything you're saying about the, the ups and downs, the, the, the barriers you never expect with obviously your, your rowing um, journeys as well. But I thought we'd start if it's okay with, with your background. And I guess the question really is your, your passion for adventure. Um, where did that come from? Was there anyone who inspired you or what's your kind of background with that? Yeah, it's, I mean, a, a big part of it came from what, when we were growing up as kids and uh, our granddad was um, a middleweight boxing champion of Scotland, uh, and um, and then he was a squadron leader of RAF, and he was the first man to then fly a plane, uh, uh, an open cockpit biplane over Mount Everest. And so they had some, uh, the Atlantic had been done, uh, but no one actually could cross the tallest mountain in the world. And there was open and and they had oxygen, but if their oxygen ran out, they had about thirty seconds. Uh, at that altitude before they'd lose consciousness and uh, there's been actually a big pillar on and they actually got taken down after they went over a ridge about 2,000 feet before the summit and they only cleared it by about 40, 40 to 60 feet. Uh, oh. It's quite interesting the footage they then took from that is what they then uh, what Sir Edmund Hillary then used 20 years later to then summit um, the summit Mount Everest using what the new route which is the Hillary step from that expedition and um, so that was that was so we kind of grew up with all that so read the book endurance by shackleton and mm. in awe of what shackleton had achieved you know against such you know such harsh conditions and um and to, to get through and keep all his men alive and just couldn't believe how tough it was and uh, and then it makes it's a quite quite an exciting feeling kind of going back <laughs> and being able to do that yeah and and be able to do that again uh, funny enough, actually, uh, next year, well, over Christmas of this year, we're going mm. to be doing a route that's the, when Shackleton got marooned on Elephant Island and managed to convert a lifeboat and go to South Georgia. Uh, mm. We're actually rowing from Antarctica past Elephant Island nonstop to South Georgia, which would be a world, world <sighs> Um But we completed another one over Christmas, and that was we rowed from South America, the bottom of Cape Horn, uh, mm. to Antarctica and that's that was a difficult one very 
very cold. Mm. Cold makes you want to almost give up, just curl into a ball and just give up. But um, and you got a fetch that goes around from west to east, all around Antarctica. It's the only fully looped current as you're trying to go south. And so you got mm. these enormous waves. Uh, we had four storms, and by the end, about a pretty significant frost nip. My fingers and toes couldn't move them at all, actually. And luckily, it came back uh, after a while. But <laughs> that's, and that's what we try to do with, you know, as we move, develop active, we want more of our team members to get involved with adventuring, pushing themselves. Mm. Uh, whatever that is, uh, we've got another one, he's, uh, one, one of our head of sales is actually cycling across from Cape Town to Cairo. Uh, so that's uh, trying to break Mark, Mark Beaumont's records. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's a very, very fit guy, and and it's it's all about that's the why to brand is so important. Your purpose, mm. what you stand for, and what we stand for is that nothing is impossible. That um, you, know, you get one life, you know, make the most of it, and you know everything we try to do is inspire, energize, uh, and bring out products that help you get more from your day. You know, because mm. we feel you're most fulfilled when you're most active, and. Uh, Red Bull, Red Bull is done with creating that lifestyle is phenomenal. The mm. problem is it's, uh, it's a terrible <laughs> product. <laughs> uh, um, I'm not a terrible, I shouldn't say that on here, but it's it's a highly acidic product. Uh, I know that a lot of his energy drinks have uh, have problems with their co-packers. They actually mm. used stainless steel as a standard. You shouldn't be able to corrode stainless steel. But the energy drink supply um, companies in, in America actually are corroding stainless steel pipes so they have to get mm. replaced every four or five years which is insane you know mm. uh, so we're trying to do that but within water and water has been as a category there's very little loyalty uh, mm. and there's very little emotional connection to it and so we're trying mm. to get that emotional connection through building a lifestyle brand mm. uh, so that's why in the name drink active be active is our tagline charge up that's it. Uh, I love it, Jamie, and I, I love to come on to that. I, I think we will cover it. Um, I know you mentioned tribe, you know, building a tribe, coming into this whole, it's almost community, I guess, maybe at a bigger scale, if that's the right word. Um, one thing I was keen to ask you, and, and hopefully um, there's even like one or two things you can think of here. All the adventuring you're mentioning, just obviously remarkable. Um, uh, within that, are there any lessons from your adventures that you've taken into business? Um, obviously, you're dealing with difficulties and leading a team. What what comes to mind? Yeah, they're very, very similar because one, you've got to be crazy enough to have the idea of doing something <laughs> that you've done before, and, or naive enough or optimistic enough, whatever the right <laughs> word is. Then you've, got to, then you've got to find other people who want to join you in the journey. You've got to have a vision. You've got to then build the team. You've got to then get the funding. Uh, you've got to then do all the, you know, all your logistics planning, plan like crazy. And then you've got to work very hard and take all the hard knocks and have, but the most important thing is have no safety net. So, mm. so, um, so we did the Indian Ocean. There was no support boats for Antarctica. We had to have one for, to get permits. But, you know, mm. you don't want to get any support, but you don't want to get, you know, you, you're fully committed. Um, mm. So you get naked essentially with your idea. It becomes part of your identity, uh, and uh, and then so yeah, vision, t building that team, raising the funding, getting you know getting people interested, and it's the same. You got to do the same marketing. You got to do the same kind of PR launches, social media launches, etc., and and a cause, and work out what your messages are from that, and they're, they're very very similarly interlinked. And the same feeling that you get with, I mean, obviously you get a huge, a lot of adventures like, the, you know, the, the dopamine high you get from mm. going through such a difficult time, then getting to your goal at the end. It's very, very mm. similar to, to entrepreneurship. You know, it's um, so many times I'd get, feel down, you know, when it comes to Friday and you think I've sent out <laughs> so many emails to buyers, uh, hoping that's like Tesco to get back to me and nothing. Mm. And you think it's like sending emails into thin air. But then suddenly, when you actually do land one of these things, it makes it all worthwhile. Mm. I love that. Yeah, and it, it's something that we'll come back to. I know we spoke yesterday about the kind of ice cube idea and um, 
course, I give some more context there in, in, in a second. I thought we'd maybe fast forward, if it's okay, to some more recent history. And, and I guess this topic of, of hardship and, and really keeping going and resilience, uh, obviously, of course, speaks to, to COVID and lockdown. And I guess we're all kind of feeling it now in January. But I'd love to focus on your your crowdfund last year, Jeremy, because to me, that's such a positive outcome. Um, 1.2 million, if that's right, obviously. Correct me if I'm yep. pretty wrong. I'd love to touch on that. And if you're able to share into a couple of insights of how you went about it and what do you attribute that success to? Or do any kind of key factors? Yeah, it's we had a lot of discussions internally uh, whether or not we could raise it. And um, we had some more uh, traditional board members who, who were against it, say, realised the economy was going to suffer, a lot of people were going to be out of jobs. And, uh, and no one knew what's going to happen with coronavirus. Um, we managed to get, get it past the board. And what the, <laughs> the biggest thing I'll say of crowdfunding is, certainly for us, is it's not what it appears. Um, I went into it with a very different attitude to what it was when I came out. Uh, mm -hmm. Crowdfunding was an enormous amount of work, enormous amount of work, huge distraction getting to crowdfunding. Uh, we actually raised 90% of our money for our networks. Uh, very little came from the platform. And, and it was, it, it, the, the, there's techniques you can do with crowdfunding, but it was, it was much more work than, than I expected yeah. and quite, pretty high fees. Um, so we knew we were going to raise 1.2 million. So we then decided to put our target down at, 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 at uh, less than 50%. So we went for 500,000 targets. The reason why is people, it gives people confidence when a fund of companies goes into overfunding. Mm. So once, once underfunded, um, you, you know, it, 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 it's much harder to, to raise it. So actually we'd raised 610,000 before we'd even gone into the funding round. And wow. that's from people we knew uh, that, 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 you know, as cornerstone investors, one was a previous investor, uh, another, you know, so, so, some big, one was a big global Scot in America and, and from the Entrepreneur Scotland Network and others are just connections within the industry. And so we've raised uh, 610 before we went in. Yeah. Then we did a huge PR campaign beforehand and we timed it with Department for International Trade, uh, which we're account managed with them. And they were looking for success stories. Yeah. And as a result, we, they, they wanted, you know, uh, to, to put a good news story out there and just happened that we were doing the crowdfunding at the same time. But we got major coverage. Uh, we got the grocer is the number one magazine in our industry. Yeah. We've been the grocer four times this year. Uh, there was a really good article um, uh, just before crowdfunding. Uh, we've gone to the Times, the Herald, um, uh, a few Telegraph things. And that, that really helped. All of this is about how you tell a story. Everything we do with, with, with entrepreneurship is how the founder and CEO tells those, those stories, you know, and, and uh, we then went into the countdown to it. And then, so we did every day, we had a countdown, you know, from seven days, six days, five days, four days, changed the graphics. And we had about a month long campaign of when you're building it up on LinkedIn is such a powerful tool. Mm. I'm probably reaching I mean, someone's 150,000 uh, views. On, on, on post you put up, um, it was just discussing before how they've changed their algorithms, but, but LinkedIn is definitely very, very powerful. Um, and then, so on the first day, we built it up and said it's going to be live from nine o'clock. And on the weekend before, so on the phone, promoted 300, you know, 300 calls, just literally non stop. Uh, we, we raised 250,000 that first in that first day, but the majority of it was the people that came in through the platform came in for 20 pounds or, or, you know, or, or hundred pounds. I was looking at it thinking, you know, is this what, is this what the crowdfunding is about? And, and I was very, very surprised. And then after a few days, it slowed to halt. When I say slow to halt, we were getting like one and a half thousand a day. And I was like, we're in trouble. <laughs> you know, this is going to be much harder. Then I started getting internal pressure because I said, oh yeah, I'll go in. In three to four days. I thought we get enough traction, you get the first two fifty thousand, then create a snowstorm, 
and and it'll go quickly it didn't and and then i had to really work at it really all of us had to and that was time away from the business and it came to the last day and i think we had eighty thousand left to raise and all of that night before the day you know from we were just on, on the phones and then slowly by slowly we managed to get 40,000 and another one, another one, and it sold out, I think at seven o'clock that night. And it was, <laughs> it was such an exciting time. However, another thing to know on crowdfunding is not everyone pays you. So not everyone who signs up to it. So we actually had a hole of, of, of 50,000, which we got from another investor. Um, and the longer the cooling off period, so after you raise the money, there's a cooling off period and and as a result uh, and that 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 takes i think that took about a month and we lost quite a few investors in that uh, and just we we're, were told and some people had gone in twice they they made a duplicate investment so it's little things to watch out for mm -hmm. um but we were relatively unknown you know we, we were we were known within you know people who, who follow us and you know we had a following but that that really helped we got a lot of press out of that. Social mm. media has taken off much more. Our online sales doubled as a back of crowdfunding. Um, you know, it's it's our sales in general actually went up afterwards, and it started to build that community of activists, uh, and and that's what we're really about: is building that 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 a very loyal community. And mm. so, from from a marketing campaign, it's a great form of relatively cheap marketing. But I put it under a marketing budget. I wouldn't put it under an investment budget. Um, you know, so uh, but it was it was and I've known other people to, to done crowdfunding. It's been much more work. But I think if we were to do it again, one, we'd be in a better economic time. Hmm. Two, we've already got the 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 eight hundred investors already invested. So they were more, a lot of them would would more, more likely to invest, potentially invest more next time. And you'd 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 you probably I think we could sell it out much quicker at a higher valuation um, mm. and 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 raise a lot more money if we did it again in Q1 2020, you know, 2022. Mm. So that's it. That's a great story, Jim. It's really interesting you saying that because one of my questions, of course, was coming over to the, the doubling sales distribution angle as well. But one do actually, I might change slightly the the question now and I'm, I'm hearing you mention obviously about by the science of it that is beyond a full-time job per person you know crowdfunding so intense i can i can i can just almost picture the pressure from from what you've said so i guess question for you now jamie it's almost two parts i'm going to cheat a bit with two questions oh that's okay um kind of similar theme one of them would be how did you balance the your time and your role uh, leading the company during the crowdfund and then i guess to kind of cheat a bit and hop on that question, how has your role changed in general over the last kind of few years and how do you expect it to, to grow? So I know that's a lot in one, but hopefully that encompasses the same, yep, yep. same theme. <laughs> well, I, it's, it's a, I thought in some ways the last year was going backwards to, was at the start, you're doing everything, hmm. you know, and you, you're, you're, you're playing multiple hats, you know, you're dealing with the contracts, you're, you're putting every invoice into zero, you're handling the accounts, you're then dealing with everything in production. You're doing everything in branding. You're you're, you're you're doing. You're wearing so many different hats and doing it all. And that's the fun stage. Uh, later on, you've got to then pick a role, and and it's quite hard delegating. It's quite hard handing over the you know your accounts. It's quite hard doing your first employee. Um, you know, but but you've got to get used to it and get used to it quickly. And the question you've got to ask yourself is what is the best use of your time? And paying someone and doing something zero isn't the best use. Like if you're a founder, you've got to be the front person out there. The biggest thing is building relationships, you know, building relationships and trying to drive the 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 the, the actual sales, the revenue. You know, you focus on the revenue. You can come back, to, you know, the, the work out efficiencies to work out better profits late later on. That can all come once you're more established. But it's all about sales, all about traction. And so my role is very much sales and marketing uh, and, and building the relationships. Uh, every, um, well, all the early distributors, all the uh, retailers um, from Tesco's to Harrods to Whole Foods, they were all people I personally contacted. 
we were using a sales agency at the start and they gave very mixed messages because they didn't really fully understand the product mm -hmm. to, to the category so we had to stop it with sales agent I, I didn't plan to go into sales but it's just somewhere i just had to you know um uh knew that if we were going to expand quickly that's what needs to needs to, to, to do and uh and now i'm f focused a lot on exports but as mm. as we came back yes yeah, so, so when it came into 2020 20 into march into coronavirus um we knew things were slowing down our team didn't have much to do and as a result we followed the team and we had a team of seven and we went down to three of us uh one of which was was went on holiday for two weeks and he was one thing the production and and our team of seven you know that's that's a tight team everyone has to do certain things you know with that team when we're, we're now eight at the moment but you know when someone goes to the holidays things things you know you, you need to get really get, get in contact with them what is hard to handle you know with, with that team when you go down to three and when you go down to two that's really hard for the whole of 2020 until four days off i felt like i didn't have a break the whole way through it um, it's never on your mind once you get from one thing you're into another thing into another you know and it's just it's, it's endless and actually to be honest so far this year it's been absolutely non-stop but in a good way it's um surprisingly in this time as far as it is you know we've We've got Tesco Island, we've got Duns over in One Liters, we've got Wasabi Sushi Chain, Virgin Active, Nuffield Gyms, so we've confirmed national contracts once lockdown opens, getting close to Whole Foods and the potential Starbucks listing. So there's a lot of, of and that's in the USA, so I mean, it's, it's a lot happening over over in UAE, we've managed to get into mm -hmm. three big grocers over there, and Fitness First come through, and the three big online platforms. So there's a lot of yeah, there's, there's been a, been a lot happening, but it's it's been a very tough having to follow. And the biggest thing is how you adapt. Um, and we then knew that food service was was finished uh, while coronaviruses are going on, as was travel. And and so we had to then and and front of store. It's the front of stores, your coolers, uh, at the ambient where your where your multi pack sit. Is it was actually been really strong. We've seen yeah. record growth. So we had a focus on grocery, online, and export. Mm -hmm. Online sales, as a result, diverting the the uh, the attention onto that has actually grown tenfold, tenfold in Amazon, eight times in Mercado, and we've got our own online shop. You know, which is which is, is the highest profit margins. So, I mean, that's 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 been really good, and it had a lot of you know. I think we we're in what, eleven countries before. We're now in it's actually sixteen. Uh, we're now in and uh, about to launch another four so it's it's been a good good yeah it's been 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 a, been a, a very interesting year last year um i know that the start the start of this year has been very hard for some re retail groups uh, and um i think it's putting they were already under pressure but this is enough to put so much pressure on they're either having to do mass redundancies um or 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 look emerging you know it's 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 quite it's quite serious but hopefully you know this will this will change in march you know, that's what we're hoping for yeah. um same time there's a lot of optimism out there you know we're booking a lot of trade fairs a lot of events we just signed tough mudder to do the it's been the the, the hydration part of tough mudder spartan nice. and and that's the biggest way where, where you get your biggest return on marketing is actually getting people to sample your products and try your mm. products uh, and so when they see what of active it looks different <laughs> you know, different cap and it's it's just you know it's premium branding it tastes different and it's alkaline so it makes it feel different mm. you know it, it's, it's a great way of, of of getting people to buy again so we're trying to you know this year get, get out at least 450,000 bottles through sampling event um that's fantastic well I'm a, I'm a keen tough water participant myself, Jamie. So if it goes ahead, I'm, you know, I'm hoping to get some of that. Like I said, good hydration <laughs> myself. Yeah. Well. Um, fantastic. So I've got one more question from me, and then quick bit of Q and A if that's okay. Um, Ali, just a quick shout out to you. Really great question. Um, give me a yes in the comments if you're up for coming on and asking. Um, keen to give you a kind of real, real life-ish experience. 
Amazing. So we'll come to you, Aaron, in just a second. So I guess question for you, Jamie, just to bounce off um, your recent experience. You mentioned going down to Team Two. That just sounds insane. Um, I was really keen to ask guys because obviously you're such a, a, an adventurous, savvy person, a very fit. I, I can only imagine. What would be, say, even one or maybe two tips you'd give to to company leaders like yourself? You know, maybe founders, entrepreneurs, to to keep themselves healthy. Is there anything? that's your go-to obviously of course other than uh at tph itself um does anything yeah. come to mind yeah I, no matter how busy you get it's important to still do fitness and <clears throat> there were periods of last last year where i didn't you know crowdfunding me one of them you know for that four weeks didn't do anything actually and you're working so hard and you're always stressed and you're never getting a break and you're always you're you're on edge and mm. I think it's much better no matter how busy you get to always make time to do fitness because the endorphins act as a barrier to get stressed um mm. they they and you just think clearer you sleep better everything about it i think fitness is 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 number is so key um it's amazing just actually in this lockdown just being able to tra train train just converted the the garage into into a little gym as oh. well. so it, and it's you feel so much better the next day, you know, and just so much clearer things that you would worry you, you don't, you don't worry so much. You just kind of think, well, what happens if you lose that? You know, you just, you can make plans around everything. But once you can, if you don't do fitness, I think you can get, you can get far too stressed. Hmm. So that'd be my number one, number one advice. Fantastic. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, it's, it's great advice. I think it's always, it's always an investment of time um, to, to save you time. Obviously, I'm biased, so don't, don't hear from me, of course. But that's what that's my question, Jamie. Really appreciate your time for those. I'm looking forward to hearing from the audience. So I'm just going to add Ari onto the stage. Hope you're ready, Ari. Um, and obviously, I'll pass over to you to, to ask away. Hi there. Hey. Hi, Jamie. Thanks very much for sharing all your, your story there. Um, yeah, my question was really around sales. So I'm kind of at the stage where I've got to decide how to delegate properly. And, you know, those first hires are obviously so important. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that you said, you know, it was about revenue generation for you. And you thought that was where your strength was um, at the time. Um, and I feel like, you know, I get good results when I talk directly to, to buyers as well. But um I wondered if you could share what your most effective technique there was, because, um, you know, there's various, various ways, you know, you can, you can hack LinkedIn, you can, um, find, a an, an email on a website and start, you know, a, a, a trail to try and find the right person. Um, I mean, what really worked for you? It, well, it was it was it was a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of these buyers would would just not answer emails, and you keep on t changing it around. And I mean, what they were looking for is something differentiation. It, it's it's the number one thing. Is this different? Is this going to bring more people into the stores? Uh, you know, is it is it going to give a higher cash margin? Will it be a repeat purchase product? Um, what does it look like? Or, you know, look like on shelf? How much are they going to? You know, you got to you got to almost consider what the buyer is looking at, looking for, uh, what he has in his range. And it's very important. So I'd, I'd do things, I'd go to Whole Foods and I'd put bottles of Active in the range and, and I'd take out yeah. the products that I knew weren't performing. And I'd say, look how good it is here, taking out the, the, the ones. So basically putting the idea into their mind uh, without them, you know, without saying, saying you should, you should remove these. Then once you get the, the one of the biggest things we use is exclusivity um, for new markets. Uh, we offer, we, we essentially try to find the m &S or Waitrose of new markets. And, and we say to them, you know, in new countries, we'll give you exclusivity for one year. We did the same to start off with in Harrods. Uh, so we say we gave them exclusive for one month. We weren't any other retailers. And still today, we still quote Harrods as a place we started. And we became the number one selling water actually in Harrods at one stage um, as a result of that. And they gave us a whole, normally you'd have to pay for those bays and, and they gave us a whole bay as a result. That then, once you've got a story like that, 
it's easier for them to get into Whole Foods. And you've got to be constantly out there. I only, I send the email the buyer eight emails, I think, uh, before I met him. And I met him at, at a Meet the Buyer event when I got there early. And one person hadn't turned up in time and, and for a nine o'clock shed and they got 20 minutes each. And so I was allowed to go in. It's purely by luck. And I met the guy and said, hi, Miguel. The one writing, writing all those emails and he knew exactly who I was, um, you know, from, he didn't, didn't, didn't apologize. But then, then once you're in front of someone and you get the meeting, you're much more likely to get it. And, and email is only there to get the face to face, you know? Yeah, so, and the big thing is not to make them too long. Uh, I was making them quite, put a lot of information, you know, it's good to keep it, you know, go in the top points and then some bullet points buy but why, why it'll be good how it's going to and the key was the word incremental value uh that's that's the one you know it's not taking you know, add value to the range you know you're not a me too product um and pioneer of a category and and so a lot of things like that they 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 they, they really like and once you've started to build up some retailers you can then you've got the ability to create a story um but in marketing everything counts you know, so we had really nice visuals of the bottles with um, a pre pretty good presentation pack. We spent a lot on on high res, um, just high impact boxes, very nice boxes. So every since I open a box, it it looks good. You've got foam inside. You take it out. It's something that that whiskey brands do. No water brands put that much into box. Our initial ones cost seventy five pounds each, and so when they get it, they look at it and think, "What's well, water?" This can't understand and then it shows that this is a premium product it's differentiated it's different to anything on the market um but one thing leads to next getting that first sale the biggest thing is exclusivity and then after that um you know being able to tell that story but at the same time connecting with every buyer you have on linkedin linkedin is so powerful and and always showing that you've got traction always showing that mm. you know you're, you're doing things in marketing you know what's happening behind the scenes people love to see what's happening at the plant what's you know even things like i've had twenty thousand views of one post which is our team packing boxes uh, um you know so it's it's people like those personal personal ones um you know but it's, it's it's just showing this constant traction and this exciting exciting you know exciting products and that's that that, that really helps thanks yeah that's great i guess like some of the way someone put it to me was how are you going to make the buyer famous? That's that's what they want to know. Yeah, yeah, and and because they 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 loved their you know for them to be able to say, oh yeah, I brought that in, even though you know, you've had to had to do a lot of work to convince them. Uh, they, they loved to say, to say that, and 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 that, and that's how we got listed in Tesco. Uh, Tesco wanted to be the first grocer to take it, and. And so they were, they were really keen. And the, the, the other thing is, don't believe what you hear in the papers. One of the best retailers you can deal with is the biggest, is Tesco. Uh, they pay you in two weekly terms, uh, and not the other pay you in 90 day terms. Um, pretty decent margins, uh, and very, very good to work with actually. Um, and so they, they've been, they've really helped kind of springboard us, um, which is interesting. So it's, it, and the other thing is how you'd imagine the retail environment to be is different because you're dealing with people at the end of the day. And if a buyer, you know, another, another buyer who's, who's come in and just refers to it as a water range, that we're not taking any more waters, even though we tell her that this is over a hundred thousand times more alkaline than what you get an energy drink, because the pH scale is logarithmic. So it goes, it's, it's a logarithmic curve, uh, that she still doesn't understand it. So it's. It's funny how you can go, you can, you can plan and plan, plan, but in fact, you know, if it comes down to, it comes down to people and we were very lucky that we had a good buyer in Tesco's, um, that just got it. That's cool. Thank you. I really appreciate the, the detailed answer. That's it. Fantastic. It was a great question. So we appreciate that. Uh, you guys may have seen, um, I've actually been able to extend the event by half an hour. So this people for the network now, still why Jamie, I'll, let you go uh if you uh, oh, no, 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 no <laughs> comes of your time um but with that said i'll bring on alex next and then maybe one more question if that's okay got some amazing questions in the q a and they always feel 
bit guilty actually for not asking them all, but hopefully we'll have some good discussions on the tables. Alex, over to you. Hey guys, can you hear me all right? Yep. yep. Hi, Jamie, nice to meet you. Um, so my question is, I'm hyper selfish and ask a question about sports directly, but you seem to be really well integrated into kind of the, the, gener the general sports ethos that you mentioned, Tough Mudder, all this kind of stuff. Um, so I was just wondering if you could share any advice about how you went about doing that, because my company is a, is a sports tech company as well, and we're just trying get to get to the stage of integrating ourselves with a few more areas in the sports market. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about how it was you managed to get those get those connections. Yeah, um, oh, the, 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 the easiest way to describe it is one thing leads on to the next. And we, our first event was BeFit London. It's the biggest, mm -hmm. either it's, it doesn't go on now, but it was the biggest female fitness event in the UK. And, and you had all the hit blasters, yoga studios, boom cycles, pro boxing, you know, pretty, pretty amazing event. And we were the hydration partners. We gave out 15,000 bottles uh, over those, those two days. And one of the people we met there was Run Free, which was entrepreneurs in London who were ex runners. And they were doing park runs. And, and, and uh, they do about 150 of them a year in different places in London and, and, uh, and, and, another, and Birmingham, Manchester. And we sponsored them. So we gave them, what, if someone does a 5K or 10K, they come back, they get a bottle of active and, uh, and, and a medal. And then from there, we contacted Body Power, biggest fitness event in Europe, uh, we became a hydration partner of that. And then once you start doing more of these things, you start getting invited to be the hydration partner of more events. And, and then that, that's how it kind of led until now we've got a team of, of influencers behind us. You know, we've got a lot of people contacting us, um, you know, to, to, to want to be ambassadors. Uh, a lot of people are actually just doing it for free, you know, just give them a case of water yeah. and they're doing it for free. So yeah. what one thing leads on to the next, you know, uh, I didn't have these contacts at, at the beginning, this, you know, they, 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 they've all developed at the time. And that's fantastic. Uh, no, that's amazing. Um, I feel like I could ask you questions for an entire day. So I'm going to let somebody else jump on just now. But Jamie, I'd love to catch up with you and have a chat sometime if you're up for it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, we'll connect on yeah, LinkedIn. We'll have a chat. Yeah. Perfect. Use the power network of LinkedIn. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Great stuff. Um, so we have time for one more question, I think, if that's okay. Um, Cameron, I'm not sure if you can hear me or if you're ready. Uh, send me a yes in the chat if you're up for asking. I mean, it's a really interesting question. Um, if not, I'd love to invite someone else on. Yes, you are. Epic. Good stuff. One second. Get quite used to this. Who, who needs Zoom anymore? It's uh, all about Remo. <laughs> Cameron, just a second. Yeah. Yeah. Are. Hey. All good. Perfect. Um, yeah, I suppose my, my question um, is obviously related to what, what we do. Um, and I think, Jamie, you know, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of, of the brand and, and the narrative. And we spoke a little bit at the tail end of last year, but I'm kind of interested in, in how you said, you mentioned in your speech that retail isn't really as what it was. Um, and I think you're probably referring across sectors, maybe more so hitting the kind of fashion than sort of... Um, essential supermarkets that have been allowed to stay open, but inevitably you're going to have to pivot some way in terms of digital. How have you been able to consistently tell your brand story and narrative, which I think is really powerful, but do that in a digital manner where you maybe aren't able to, to stand up or people don't have that um, luxury of holding the bottle and, and feeling that little bit of as an activist or, or however you want, want to term it, how have you been able to do that digitally? Um, through maybe paid media or, or social channels that are self-owned? Uh, we, we've had to be more creative. Um, and one of the cam a recent campaign we did was where we, uh, we produce bottles of active personalized in different names. So it went from, so it would be, it would be you know, it would be Sophie, Ian, uh, Corinna, you know, any, any different names. And that went all, that then went out to different influences that we chose. They then took photos of it, put it onto their feeds, and then, then had this bottle that they still carry around and go to the gym now. But everyone knows it's an active bottle. So that was a good personalized mm -hmm. campaign, worked with a lot of ambassadors, uh, and just building up as much traction, you know, as 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 we can. 
and, and, and interest on social media. One thing we've moved away from is generic posts and that what we were trying to move away from. And we had, we've had a couple of few social media agencies who were using stock photography and designing it well, but it was getting no interaction. Mm -hmm. And what actually gets interaction is photos taken, messy photos taken from a Samsung or, a, or an iPhone, just your mobile phone, of things that are happening day to day. And people connect to that because that's real life. But when it's, when it's not all nicely designed, it seems like people switch off and just think, there's so much things happening on Instagram, you know? And it's quite, Instagram's a hard channel for brands. It's very good if you're a fit looking influencer, you know, to get a lot of views. A lot of people want to, want to see it, but if you're a brand, it's quite hard to get that cut through. And it's moving away from just the, the, the bottle shots. And so we've actually had to bring in, we've hired an, an in-house an in -house, a team actually. Uh, we just did a, did a recent video uh, all about pH. So the fierce, the, the fast, the focused, uh, the free, et cetera. And you bring it, we'll bring the pH. And so, I mean, that's, that's I think having real stories, real image, you know, it m makes a big difference and just being very creative. Uh, because we're limited by what you can do in marketing. You can't do outdoor advertising. Uh, there's, 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 there's no point to it. And we've had to do a lot of digital. I don't know if you you've, if you follow Active, you might have seen a few digital sponsored ads that's come through to our, our, our online shop recently. Yeah. Um, but things like that have been really effective. And uh, so I say, no, I, I camera. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, uh, we, we were doing, we, uh, we had a request to um, a, a proposal in Chinese. Uh, to, for Alibaba to go Timo and uh, and Cameron uh, actually came back to the full full presentation red units uh, uh, all in Chinese uh, went through everything and it's brilliant had really good feedback so um, so yes we well, look forward to I think that. it's really really important is the way you guys have actually sorry I don't want to take up everyone's time <laughs> but what I've seen from the way you guys are looking to engage with people it is very down to the ground it, it, it's real and uh, I think that in particular is coming across to me um whereas you're right I mean fitness brands all over the world with with 10x the times budget that you have can make something look pretty on InDesign or, or whatever piece of software they want to use before publishing it but it's not real, you know, it's very easy to do that. The, the bit that's real, I saw the campaign, you went out with it, with the bottles and I know, well, I wouldn't say I'm friends, but I know uh, first name basis, Sam Hidalgo Klein, who works with you. Um, and it feels yeah. very real to me as someone who engages with similar things. And I think it's been a really, I, I presume it's strategy. So I think it's been a really successful implementation of your, of your strategy. Yeah. And, and, and everything we're trying to do is get, you know, it's trying to, with all our content, is, is to make people feel a certain way, to make people feel empowered, you know, to inspire and energize, you know, to help them get the most out of their lives. And that's why, you know, it's, it's that feeling you're really looking to encourage them to be active uh, and to, to get that across. That's it. Well, well thanks, Gavin. Great, um, great question there. And um, Jamie, could it, would it be okay to do, Final question. I know I said that was the last. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I've, I've got another to go. So yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, so I was conscious that Julian had a really good question, and actually, it was one of the top voted ones. So I feel that would have been a, yeah, yeah, it's a good service. Yeah, so, yeah, fantastic. I'll just invite it on. Second. Yeah, whereas that would have been, uh, well, not not the best democracy to to not wait to ask. <laughs> top voted. So yeah. Definite obligation there. Um, Jerry, can you hear us okay? And can you speak to us? I'm not sure if your video's on at all. Oh, I see David's on. Um, let me try that again. And over you, Jerry, you've got the option to turn your mic on as well. There we go. Hey. Hi. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Oh, great. Thanks. Um, so fantastic uh, insights to your journey, Jamie. Thank you very much. Really interested in the, the crowdfunding side of things. And it sounds very much like the crowdfunding was more of a platform aggregator for, for you bringing a lot of the crowd to that. And my question really is around, would it have been easier to just approach other angels directly than, than go down the crowdfunding campaign route? And secondly, would you, would you do crowdfunding again? 
Uh, well, very, very good questions. Um, I, I think it'll be quite hard for the board to get crowdfunding through again uh, with the boards um, because for what they offer, they should charge between three to five percent. Uh, it's uh, to be honest, they charge eight and a half percent. If you look at all their fees, it works at eight and a half. That's that's too much to to to, to what you we're getting out of it. Um, the problem is we couldn't do. <laughs> It, it is a platform, but we a lot of people that invested are people that I haven't spoken to for years. You know, for example, you know, I didn't even realize they were even going to invest. And we've got a lot of other smaller investors who've now become brand advocates. If you get angel investors, we could have raised, uh, I mean, our, our assisting investors wanted to put more, more money in, actually. We could have raised quite, quite, quite you know, we could have ra raised that money. We were trying to build it out so to get it at that crowd. So once you've got a thousand highly engaged followers, you've then got, you're going to pass that tipping point where the brand should just take off after that, because they'll be telling their friends about it. They'll be mentioning it. Uh, so I'd, it was a platform. It was a lot of hard work. Overall, it was worth it. Uh, I would like to do it again, but what I'd probably do is I'd, I mean, the, the, if we can get to a, high, a much higher valuation, um, you know, within a year's time and then get two to three strategic partners on board so potentially a co-packer in usa so we can produce in usa uh, a distributor you know, one of the big distributors and and to get them on for someone right to get real strong um your cornerstone investors and they don't charge you for the cornerstone investors but they can still go on the platform so let's say we're raising one and a half if three million and that would be a target we then set our, we probably set the target at 1.2 million. The first day you go into it, you probably have 1.5 million already raised. They won't charge you for that 1.5. They will charge you the 1.5 after that. And so that's that's probably the way we'd we'd, we'd look to do it afterwards. Um, and it, 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 it's a great mark. It's a cheap form of marketing. I think that's the, the best way of looking at it. And it's, it has been great for, I think it's probably one of the most powerful marketing tools but as a finance option, it was much tougher, much harder to go. Even now, with all the EIS, you know, it, 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 it took a long time. And you've got to be on top of them, you know, because they're supposed to pay a month afterwards, uh, you know, the, well, the cooling off period. But they, you know, it took about two and a half months to get the money into our account. So, I mean, if, you, if you're doing it because you're going to run out of money in a certain time, you know, you've got to be really careful crowdfunding. Because, you know, it's going to take longer than you expect to actually get the money into your account. But yeah, I think I think it is it is it is it is a good thing to do. Um, I think it'll go different def differently next time, but the first time is hard. That's great, thank you. That's it. Thanks, Jerry. A great question. I was keen to give you a chance to ask. It would have been uh, an absolute injustice <laughs> if I hadn't. So, so thank yeah. you. Um, fantastic. Well, Jim, a huge thank you again. Um, just so many incredibly insightful and. Um, <laughs> Al and my co-founder say knowledge bombs to use that word and I think it, it's so true and um, honestly could listen all night Jamie honestly and um, we appreciate your time and um, such an amazing story and look forward to sharing some of the recordings so that's okay with you and um, probably on LinkedIn to to obviously use your know, yeah, yeah. favorite, uh, favorite platform um, and yeah of course like I mentioned everyone we'll still be here in Remo for the next kind of 20 minutes or so um, kicking them out of the tables but yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you again, Jimmy. Uh, I loved it. You could tell the audience loved it. And um, looking forward to some great conversations on the tables as well. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot.